So we are back on the banks, back on the Trent, doing some more barbell fishing. It's been probably three weeks since I was fishing in England. I've been away, I've been really busy the past few weeks. I've been working on a couple of new books, a part one and a barbell one, and I've been away on holiday as well. Did a bit of fishing abroad in Spain, and I'm back in England now. The temperatures are obviously completely different. I've come from 30 degrees to, I think today's about 12 degrees, something like that. And it's been about three weeks since I was fishing on the Trent. My last session I didn't record, I didn't show anything. And I got a couple of pictures of some fish. And the river at the, at the time when I was fishing, it was probably 26, 27 degrees. It was clear, very low. Typical summer fishing, really tough. And I think I caught probably two barbell, little small ones, about three or four pound. I've been away working mega hard on these books, trying to get them out, because I've been having loads of questions about when the book's been released. I'm thinking the barber one might be released by the time this video is out so if it is I'll put a link in the description and you can go and check that out it's a book it's a bit of a handbook it's different to the one that I did in 2016 that was a carp fishing one that was a full-blown like 300 page book full of stories loads of pictures this one is a how-to book it's in a sort of an essential guide if you like and it's based on barbell fishing you know I've been doing it a lot and over the past probably two years I've had that many questions and I get them on a daily basis asking questions all about barbell fishing so the book covers every aspect of barbell fishing whether it's bait location you know if you're joining a new stretch of river on club waters you want to know where to fish what rigs to use what bait it's everything is in there different times of the year so i'll put a link in the description for that if it is available which i think it will be and the pipe fishing book I'm working on, similar scenario, you know, it's all to do with the questions that I get asked all the time. And when I do tuitions as well, it sort of covers quite a lot of the questions that I'm being asked. So that pipe one should be out in back end of October, early November. So I'm excited about that because I do like my pipe fishing. So that's those. Went away to Spain, like I say, for a week. Lovely weather, lovely holiday. And I did a bit of fishing there as well, caught some nice fish. And it, yeah, I'm back in England now. So that's why I've been so quiet and I'm basically back on the rivers pike season is a week or so away so i'm really excited about that monster quest starts i think the first or second week of october if the weather's all right you know if it's still warm i'll probably put it off for an extra week wait for it comes down a little bit and then i can start doing some more pike fishing because i've got a freezer full of dead baits ready to get out and then try and catch some fish but for now i'm on the trend usual stretch very quiet you know the conditions fairly overcast it's very windy so i'm going to be doing a lot of talking under the bivy and it's very colored water we've got probably 12 inches on top than normal and we had quite a lot of rain for the past sort of three or four days so conditions are much better than last time i was here i've been here for probably about two or three hours i've cast the rods out i'm just gauging what to do where to put the baits and i'm just chucking feeders out trying to gauge where these fish are and if we catch some then i'll leave them in the area and then hopefully we can catch some more failing that i'll just keep moving them around getting some bait out there and then crossing my fingers for some fish so without further ado it's about dinner time now i'm gonna make some food and then hopefully throughout this session you know i'm here for 24 hours so i'll be here till tomorrow morning hopefully by then we can catch some fish and hopefully a few big ones as well So regarding the mix I'm using, it's a fairly dark mix on this session. I've gone for the actual frenzied hemp seed ground bait, the worm meal. I've used this in the past before. This is a really good one. And I've done a full bag of that there. Gone for the old golden grains. Always have a bit of sweet corn in there. And obviously my go-to boilie, which I've been using for quite some time. And that is the old ever faithful maxinot. I'm using these on the hooks as well. And the mix looking at it, it's a very, very dark mix you've got all little crustaceans in there little smashed pieces of hemp all little bits and bobs absolutely beautiful and i've got fairly large items i've got no pellets in there and i've got no maggots either so you know i've put a fair amount of chopped boiling in there as well in the sweet corn so there's all bits and bobs in there and bear in mind when i've cast this out after about probably i'd say half an hour all the bait's going to be gone so i'm just topping it up recasting every probably 45 minutes something like that and what i've actually done over the past half an hour i've scattered a few boilies about so 
this section here, my left hand rod, you'll have to excuse the audio because it's fairly windy, so the left hand rod is tucked away down here. I put probably a quarter of a kilo of boilies, just scattered them around that area, and they've gone down really nice. The mid channel, sort of middle rod, I've actually put loads of boilies further up here, and they're gonna sort of, I've anticipated them coming down and resting around this area here. So middle rod's there. And then the right hand rod is tucked away probably 70, 80 yards upstream. And I put probably half a kilo of boilies, scattered them around there. So I'm sort of staying put now. I've been casting up and down, left, right, and centre, trying to work out if there's any fish in the area, but you know, it's back end of summer, coming into autumn. So fishing's still gonna be a little bit tough. You know, the odd fish is coming out. It's not fishing very well, but you know, the fish are being caught. So I'm confident for a few fish. And what I've done is basically just covered as much here as I can in this section because it's a fairly wide stretch of river. You know, I fished it quite a few times in my videos, caught some nice fish. And the conditions, you know, it's mega heavy winds. And we've got probably, looking at it, I'd say an extra 12 inches of water than when I was here last, when it was really warm. But it looks really fishy at the moment, you know. It does look like it'll do a couple of fish, so. Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be recasting frequently, get some bait out there, and hopefully we can get a few fish in the bag, so. Yeah, let's see how we get on. So I'm just approaching about three o'clock, something like that. And this has been very quiet, you know, typical summer's day on the actual rivers. I've been trying all different areas of this peg because it's quite a wide peg, to be honest. I bet you get probably two anglers on here, so I've got a lot of space to go out. I'm fishing three rods and oh yeah, I've got loads of water to cover. So I've been pottering around the first few hours of the session. They've gone out really nice, the feeders. And I've dragged them through the swim to make sure that there's no obstacles here because a few sessions back, you know, typical on a river, you get trees come through and snags and it's nice and clear. So I've got nothing to worry about there. And I've got a feel for the swim. You know, we've got probably 13 and a half foot of depth of water in the middle boat channel. So the margins are looking around four foot, something like that, rod length out. So yeah, plenty of water to go out. I've got loads of bait out there now. I've put plenty of boilies in. Normally when I fill the feeder up, People ask me why I recast. The reason for that is simple. When I've cast it out, after about 30 minutes, because it's an open-ended feeder, the flow of the water will wear away the bait, push it through the swim, and there'll be nothing there. And there'll be little bits and bobs getting stuck in the bits of weed and the little rocks and stuff out there, and then the feeder will be empty. So I like to do a recast every, anything between half an hour to maybe an hour, and just keep that bait going in. Because I'm not gonna spook the barb, or casting in 13 foot of water, it's gonna glide through. And if there is any fish in the swim, they're gonna come and investigate, and then obviously, there's bits of bait there, then we're gonna end up catching them. My last cast will probably be about half past eight, something like that, and then I'll settle in for the night. And I'm gonna probably guess, if we do catch any fish, it's gonna be, I'd probably go for maybe a couple at night time, something like that, because I have spoken to a couple of chaps who have been here, you know, as you can imagine on the river, everyone's chin wagging, and a few are blanking, a few are catching, so it's sort of up and down, typical summer fishing. And we've only got a couple of weeks till autumn time, so, the fishing will get better on the river because it's so low at the moment. When we get more rain come through, the levels start to rise and it, you know, the fishing's much more better. And especially in winter time as well. I've done sessions on here and I've had really productive sessions. So I'm looking forward to that. And what I will do throughout the channel in winter time, it's gonna be barbel, pike and perch. I'm not gonna do any carp fishing or anything like that. It's gonna to stick to those three species. And then hopefully we can sort of fill that out throughout the sort of winter going into spring. So. I think the plan of attack now is I'm gonna get this kettle and have a cup of tea, do a recast in about 45 minutes, and then let's see if we can get any fish in the bag. Do a little recast on these rods. I've just done the left hand rod. That went out really nice. I'm just going to bring this one in, double check, make sure everything's all right, hook bait and whatnot. Yeah, that's that's absolutely perfect. So I'll quickly show you the setup I'm using, and we've got really basic open-ended feeder cage feeder and that is a core and four ounce feeder I use these all the time and on there I've got a little buffer bead just there anti-tangle sleeve 
and the hook link for this session I've gone for probably about three and a half, four foot long size 8 curve shank and a 50mm bottom bait and you know simplicity in itself for barbell fishing you don't need to uh, use over complicated rigs just keep it simple and that normally does the trick if the fishing was you know the river was really clear very very low then all I'd probably do is extend the length of the hook link for probably about six foot something like that but generally speaking three to four foot is is absolutely bang on so I'm gonna really cram that in the feeder and with the flow of the water that's gonna last probably you know because I'm cramming in quite a lot probably half an hour and then that's all going to disperse into the swim, little bits of crustaceans, chopped boilies and bits of corn. It's going to be scattered around the area. And I've got a few boilies around there as well, so it's a bit of a messy job when you're trying to do camera work at this point. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty much it, so just keep it nice and simple. I always make sure the hook's nice and sharp. And what I normally do, yeah, that's bang on. What I normally do, sort of last knockings, when it comes to the last cast of the evening, I'll always put a fresh bait on because these are highly digestible boys, they get soft really quick, so I want to make sure I've got a bait on throughout the night, so I'm going to get this one out there. And that's bang on, absolutely perfect. And that's in probably 13 foot of water, something like that. So, it's like a nice big boa line out so the feeder don't get dragged. I mean, to be honest, there's not a huge amount of flow, but the central boat channel is always the one with the most amount of flow. So, I normally let off probably six foot, something like that, so the feeder's not being dragged. And also, I need to do a test as well. When I put the actual rod down, into the rest. The number one thing that I like to do personally is when I've obviously got the rod there, just keep it on the reel for a few seconds and tighten the clutch up to the flow of the river. I mean, if it was being pulled every five seconds, then I'd have to tighten the clutch up a bit. You don't need too loose because it'll be turning all the time, but that's, that's pretty much got it. If the river was in mega flow and it was pushing through then that would just be spinning round and you'd have to tighten it up quite a lot but that's pretty much bang on so what I'll do I'll get this right hand rod cast out now and we'll go from there. So we are just approaching the witching hour, it's about half past seven, quarter to eight. The nights are drawing in now and it's slowly starting to get dark. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to be fair, it's been a very quiet day, as to be expected on the river. And I'm not going to cast any more now, I've put everything away, I've got just a bucket of gear with me. And if I do catch any fish, I'll obviously repeat the process and put the feeder out there. But for the time being, I'm all set to go. There's a lot of activity at the moment in these margins, there's quite a few small perch and I actually saw a couple of Xander moving through this margin area here and it's, I've seen them before actually and it's not very often you see Xander in margins normally they're quite far out in the river but yeah there's quite a bit of activity there so I've got my rods in the same place as earlier on I've, I've stuck my guns, I've got one in this sort of margin area I do like this peg because, well this area because it's produced quite a few fish for me in the past I've had quite a few decent sized double figure fish and there has been a few times where I've adjusted what I'm doing and you know if fish are being caught on that side nothing's here I'm happy to do that you know change your tactics but I do like to do my own thing try different bits and bobs and nine times out of ten on this section of river it works you know I've done a few blanks on here probably th three blanks I think I've got a fish on that middle rod oh that might be a bream Debra. 
Yeah. Oh, no, I bet that's a Marine. I've just cast these. I've just cast that middle rod out not too long ago. Or it might be a chub. I'm fishing a fairly tight clutch on the middle rod, so it's not going to be ripping off very quickly because it's in the mid channel. Yeah, there's something on there. Let me have a look. Well, I've just done a fresh recast on the middle rod. I'm not too sure what that was, to be honest. I thought it was a bream the way it was tapping, but it might have just been quite a few small fish feeding on the feeder. But there's fish in the area. You know, there's a few bleeps from the right hand rod as well, I've noticed over the past few hours. And like I said, I did put a few boilies, scattered them around that area. So the main reason I did that was I'm just hoping if the river's not fishing that well and a shoal comes through, you've got plenty of bait there, hold them in the area and then we can sort of fill his boots because I was hoping to do sort of a big hit on the river, you know, get loads of bait out there, big shoal comes through and then you fill your boots and you can catch him all night long. And I've got quite a few boilers with me. I've got about five, six kilo of bait with me. So normally I'd just be odd job in a feeder here and there, find the fish. When I've got them, move all the rods to one area and then, you know, one at a time. And in the past that's worked for me, but this time of year, sort of back end of summer, coming into autumn, the habits of the fish can change. You know, they could be on the far side of the river for all I know. And I've been speaking to quite a few anglers today to get an idea how the river's been fishing because I've not been here for like three weeks, something like that. So it's always good to get an idea of what's been caught where and then it can put you in good stead for catching and where you're going to be placing your rigs and your baits and stuff. So I think now it's time to just sit back, relax. The witching hour has arrived and then hopefully we can start seeing these rods go off in the next few hours. And last night was very quiet. There was absolutely nothing showing. And I think it was about six o'clock. It's about seven o'clock now, about an hour ago. That right hand rod absolutely belted off. Unfortunately, I took too long to get out of the bivet. By the time I got to the rod, I think I'd slipped over about twice, running along here. The, uh, yeah, I had it into nothing and the fish had come off, which was a bit of a shame really. But when I wind in, there was a little bit of a tree branch, probably about two inches wide, about a foot long. And it caught onto that, so. It must have used that to leverage the hook and then obviously unhook itself so unfortunately that might be the only fish of the session which is a bit of a pain really but you know that's fishing you don't normally lose barbel on a river normally because there's constant pressure on the hook you know you're never going to lose a fish it's very rare you lose a barbel but if they do go for a snag or a tree branch or anything like that it can leverage the hook and you know give it space to obviously get out its mouth so yeah unfortunately that's just one of them things that's that's fishing for you so I think it's going to be a case now of, you know, seven, eight, nine, I'll stay to about ten, so we've got three hours left. Hopefully we can get one more. I've had the odd knock on the middle rod, which is in the sort of middle channel there. So I'm hoping that we can try and get one from there. But to be honest, the way the river's fishing, I mean, I'm hearing absolutely nothing. I've got an angler probably 100 yards down, another 100 yards down. You know, there's a few people turn up last night, so I'm hoping that I start hearing people's alarms going off and you know mine goes off after that because at the moment it's very quiet you know it's summertime it's typical the odd fish comes out and it depends on what stretch you're fishing as well this one in general summertime very quiet it can be difficult you know it's very low even though we've got a little bit of water on top but you know you've got to try your chances you never know i could catch another personal best from this peg you know i have one about five six weeks ago i think something like that so you just never know what you know what's actually going to happen and the bailiff i spoke to him yesterday and he told me that you know a 19 pound had come from this peg many years ago so you know you've just got to try your luck and see if you can catch anything but like i said i put plenty of bait out yesterday so if any shoals of barbel have come through or if there's any knocking around they're going to be feeding throughout the night and then hopefully you know we'll be in a chance of catching another fish but i'm absolutely gutted to be honest but unfortunately that's part and parcel of fishing so yeah we're getting to about seven o'clock i think there's going to be a few anglers turning up, so I'm not too sure if it's going to be busy or not, but 24 hours for me is normally the case. However, because autumn's coming up, tuitions are going to be very quiet. I'm going to clear some time in my schedule. I'm going to be doing a lot of park fishing, and I will do a lot of barbel fishing as well, and I'm going to be spending more than 24 hours. Now, normally, I do get bored after 24 hours, whether I'm fishing for barbel, pike, or carp. So 
I'm just going to have to play them sessions by ear. Normally I get itchy feet after 24 and I either want to move or call it a day and come back in a couple of days time. But I think on this river in particular, I'm going to have to put a bit more time in than 24 hours. Most anglers on here, they'd either turn up for either a quick night or the anglers I've spoke to, they're doing like three to four days. So, which is a long time fishing for me personally. But that's how you're going to get the results. Just putting more time in rather than just doing a quick 24 here and there. So that's what I'm going to probably have to do. So yeah, all I can do now is just wait for these next few hours and see if we can get any fish. But yeah, that is part and parcel of it. So I think I'm going to get this cup of tea down there and then I shall slowly start packing a few bits away. I'll do a recasting probably an hour's time and then just leave it at that. And then hopefully by sort of half nine, 10 o'clock, we can get a fish in the bag. I think I'm gonna to have to wait a little bit for this rain to calm down because it is absolutely peeing it down at the moment. The weather has completely changed and I'm hoping that might be a good thing. Like I said, I've got 40 odd minutes left to fishing, but the last thing I wanna do is get absolutely drenched when I'm packing away. So you never know, it might get some of these fish in the area if there is any on the feed and moving. There's been cases where I've done it before. I've been fishing had absolutely nothing, started heavy raining and then all of a sudden out of the blue the rods start going off. So it would be nice to end the session with the fish, last knockings. But yeah, it's coming down quite fast at the moment, so yeah, it'd be nice just for one more fish. That's all we need, just a bit of a blank saver. Well, we've come to the end of the session. It is absolutely peeing it down. I've stayed an extra hour because the rain was that bad, but it's just not stopping. I think we've got a bit of a storm coming. So yeah, that's the end of the session. No fish, unfortunately. Lost that one at six o'clock, but I will return. And normally when we do, we end up catching some fish. So I just want to thank everyone for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. An essential guide to barbell fishing, now available on Amazon.